Hi everyone, uh, in this video we're going to look at what a combo class is. Let me demonstrate it a little bit before we go and make it. So we've got these buttons along the top. In my design here I want actually just you know this one to be green and these ones not to be. So what I can do is I can apply more than one class okay, to update it. It's taking some of the styling from the original one but the only thing that's changing is background clear. Same with this text here. Okay, I want just part of it to be red. So I can click in here and I've already made these. Okay, so we're gonna make this in this video, but I can say I want this little chunk to be text red. So if I click on this, I've got two classes applying to it, my button nav and my background clear. That's what makes it a combo. All right, combination combo classes. Let's get into it. All right, let's talk combo classes. What are they? They are, at the moment we've got like our button here. It's got one class. If we add a second one to it, there's two. Combination. What's combo class? Okay, so we, uh, why would we use it? Good question. Um, Because let's go for instance, let's say our design here has our green button, but a couple of them don't. Okay, so we want, want kind of, there's bits of it we want to keep, like the font color, the font size, the spacing. We just want to change the background. What I could do is go you, I could go actually let's remove this one and create a brand new class all from scratch, get it to float right, get it to be uppercase and white and add the padding. Oh, what a pain in the butt. And then if I change, say the font, I have to change this plus that new class that I made. That's where combo classes are useful. So what I can say is I wanna keep everything, but I wanna add something to it just a little bit more specific. So I'm gonna say you can be button nav, but I wanna add another class called background red that I'm making. Okay, and all I want to do is say, uh, you know, out of all of these, I'm going to say just that's what it is now. I'm going to say actually you are this red color from this text over here. There you go. Okay, so that combo class is just a little bit more specific called specificity. I think I just like saying the word specificity. Anyway, um, so yeah, we've kind of just gone over the top of it and it only does one job. It's his own job is to go background red. We can apply it to more things. We can say you also have, oh look, pre-existing combo class. There it is there. I can apply it to that. There we go. Now I want mine to be transparent, so I'm probably going to rename mine and call it uh, clear or uh, transparent, up to you. Okay, and I'm going to say actually be this like fully transparent is zoop all the way down here, or sometimes there is a swatch ready to go. There you go, and they both changed. See that? Awesome. The nice thing about the combo class is that now if the client comes back and says, hey, that font needs to be bold, you can say, no problem, I got combo classes. Okay, so I can say, click on this one, okay, my button nav, and I'm gonna say, actually, what are we changing? Typography is now going to be the bold. Can you see them all changing? Whee! Okay, because they all use button nav. The only thing changing on these two is the background's being made transparent. It's kind of why they call it the cascading style sheet. It's the CSS, okay, it cascades. You start with the body and it tells the website to do something unless something more specific happens. Like this navigation says, be in the middle, okay? And then this navigation says, I can't remember what it is, but it might say all the text be white, okay? Unless something inside of it cascades down and says, I'm more specific, like I want it to be bold. Ooh, it's gonna override and say bold. And then something even more specific says, I want this button not to be green, to be clear. So can you see the kind of hierarchy here? You start right at the top, the generic stuff, and then you get more specific. And your website will totally work if you have a thousand classes trying to do stuff. It just makes it tricky to update later on. So it's just good practice. And it's interesting, I think, anyway. Let's do another project where we're going to make a bit of the text red. So let's have a look at our design. Can you see I've made a chunk of the text red there and a chunk of the text red there. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take it a little bit further. Okay, so I want this word kayaking. First of all, I don't think we have a style for the heading. If I click on it, there's no style there. So no, I don't have a style. So I'm gonna make one called heading one. And I wanna do a couple of things. I'm gonna make it the XO. I'm gonna make it all caps. We've done this before, right? Uh, and I'm gonna make it the lightweight version. So we're kind of there, we've got a heading one. So I can't make just part of it red from here. I can't say oh, you're red. Okay, because it all comes along, this giant block, it's applied to everything. How do I apply something just to a little bit of a chunk of text? So what you do is you select that chunk of text and this pops up, okay? So you want a bit that says, this one here, wrap with a span. Can you see the little paintbrush? It's because I want to style just in this. It's called a span tag, you don't need to remember that, but in the HTML it's going to put some bits around it so that you can add a class just to this bit. So you click that, 
Nothing really changes except, well, look at that, we've got a text span. We can give it a name. Let's call this one, uh, I'm gonna call it text red. Okay, because I might have text white and blue. So it's called text red and his job is going to be override what's currently there. So it's being told somewhere along in the style sheet to be white, that's why it's amber. And not this class, but somewhere along there it is. So I'm gonna say, actually, go over the top of that one. I want to break from the norm. I wanna be a rebel. My children don't listen to their parents. I'm gonna be nuclear red. Here you go. Cool. All right, so we've done that little uh, span tag to style just that little bit. And like we did before, if we change our heading one, so I've clicked on this bit out here, heading one, and we'll say, actually, I want you to be not XO now. I want you to be these other fonts. Impact. Uh, can you see <laughs> because of that cascade or that specificity or I'm throwing words at you just, they're web design words. You might be like, I know what that is. If you're new, you, <laughs> I'm just trying to get used to some of these things because it makes it help, helpful for finding, if you've got a problem, you can Google you know, the terms that you've learned. Whereas Webflow likes to hide them a little bit just to make things more user-friendly and kind of using, using human language. Anyway, so you can see they follow through and becomes red. Oh, nice. All right, let's do it again. The cool thing about it is once you've done it once, you know, and you've got loads of pages to do, you can say, actually, remember on our design here, uh, where is it? June 8th was red. Same thing here, you can say you, my friend, are in a span. Okay, and I'm gonna add the class of text, text red. There it is. Hey, look at us, web designing. That's the idea of a combo class. You can add more than one to an element to kind of help it along or do something else. So yeah, all right, I think we got there. Combo classes, more than one class applied to a particular element. All right, on to the next video. That, my friend, is the end of the video. Uh, but not the end of the course, uh, the video you just watched. Um, it is a small part of my larger course called Webflow Essentials. So if you enjoyed the video, my teaching style, there'll be a card up here you can click or a link in the description, okay? And come join me for the full course. Uh, like the video as well if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff, but hopefully see you in the course. Bye.